Hello, welcome to Encore. Coming up, amazing animation. Inside Out, I speak to the producer and director of Pixar's most inventive animated movie yet. And we take a trip to one of France's most beautiful spots, Annecy, which is becoming the capital of cartoons for one whole week. Thanks for your company. In Pixar's latest animated feature, the film studio has learned to think like an 11-year-old. Inside Out comes from the legendary director behind Up and Monsters, Inc., Pete Docter. His last film went on to grow 600 million euros at the box office and took home two Oscars. And there's high hopes for this one, too. I spoke to the director and producer at the Cannes Film Festival, where Inside Out premiered. So, Riley, how was the first day of school? Fine, I guess. Did you guys pick up on that? Sure mm -hmm. did. Something's wrong. Signal the husband. <clears throat> Uh-oh, she's looking at us. What did she say? Oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What is it, woman? What? Pete Doctor and Jonas Rivera. Yes, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. Thanks. Where did the idea for Inside Out come from? Well, it yeah, <laughs> kind of appeared in my head. Uh, using emotions as characters seemed really fun. Uh, and at the same time, my daughter was growing up. Uh, she had gone from being a very rambunctious, energetic little kid to being a little more quiet, a little reserved. You know, she's turned 11 at that time. And so putting those ideas together, we started to explore what's going on inside of a person's head. Joy. This is sadness. That's anger. What? This is disgust. Uh, and that's fear. Ah! Fear, Riley's emotions. Woo yeah! There are five emotions mm -hmm. joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust. Right. But joy was the main character. Why? Joy, I, I can't really explain, but that was kind of part of that first like thing that flashed in my head was that. Uh, and I called her optimism at the time because I didn't know what emotions actually were, which what their names. But um, uh, it just felt like kind of the way I want to approach life. I want life to be good. I want to be happy. Uh, I want that for my kids. But the reality is that's not always going to happen, right? So sometimes you're going to have to allow some of the other guys to drive. And in the course of the film, we learn that that's useful. Fear. Run. I need a list of all the possible negative outcomes on the first day at a new school. Way ahead of you there. Does anyone know how to spell meteor? Disgust. Make sure Riley stands out today, but also blends in. When I'm through, Riley will look so good, the other kids will look at their own outfits and barf. Joy. Yes, Joy? You'll be in charge of the console, keeping Riley happy all day long. And may I add, I love your dress. It's adorable. Oh, this old thing? Thank you so much. I love the way it twirls. Oh, sadness. I have a super important job just for you. Really? Mm-hmm. Follow me. And there. Perfect. This is the circle of sadness. Your job is to make sure that all the sadness stays inside of it. Jonah, sadness, though, does have a role. What is it? She does. She, she has an important role, actually. And that's it's sort of cousin to your first question, which is joy. If, if Riley's sort of born happy, as we thought, and, and would be in the captain's chair, so to speak. And uh, in a way, she's a character in denial. There are many other emotions. And, and, and all of them, Joy thinks she can do a better job than they do. But sadness is the most mysterious. Because even, even as we made the movie, it didn't make sense. Why would you need sadness? Why would you? You certainly wouldn't want your kid to be sad. And so that just felt like the way to dramatize it. And it uh, turns out you, you, you do maybe need them, including her. I wanted to maybe hold more. What happened? Sadness. She did something to the memory. Is everything OK? I don't know. Change it back, Joy. I'm trying. Joy, no, Let's wait. Go. The core memories. Ah! No, 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 no. <laughs> so Riley's the setting of the film. During um, our journey, we see part of her where she keeps her deepest, darkest fears. Um, some of them are quite comic, like broccoli, yeah, for example. Of but little kids watching the film, is that a good place to take them? Yeah, yes. yeah. I think there's a yeah. grand tradition, not only in, of course, the Disney films, uh, which you have things like Pleasure Island and Pinocchio, which is pretty horrifying, yeah. seeing that kid turn into a donkey, you know. Um, you see Bambi's mother get shot. I mean, there's some really kind of very adult themes that are dealt with. But even before then, you, the grim fairy tales, which of course were collective stories that everybody would tell each other. There's some dark material there, and I think kids, um, need to or enjoy and to some degree uh, to be exposed to that kind of stuff. My daughter when we go into the subconscious and I watched her watch the film the other day when they climbed down there I saw her go 
Oh, and you yeah. peek, right? So that that's the idea. Like, they yeah. don't want to be there, they do. Yeah. You know? It's awesome. Congratulations, San Francisco. You've ruined me. Who's the birthday girl? And it's high concept. You met with, like, professional scientists. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, to find out more about the brain. What was the biggest challenge then? The biggest challenge was the fact that nothing existed that we could point to and say, make it look like that. A fish looks like that. A car looks like that. We had to completely make up what the characters and the world actually look like. And the geography of the world. Right. And because this is the mind, not the brain. The brain being like the blood and, and dendrites and things, the physical, like the piece of meat. Gross. <laughs> That's why we didn't make it that way. Right. We went to the mind, which is much more abstract. Talk about consciousness and personality attributes and things like this. We can fix this. We just have to get back to headquarters. That's long-term memory. You could get lost in there. Think positive. OK. I'm positive you will get lost in there. So how much did you have to tap into your own moments, your own memories of sadness, of joy, of disgust? I mean, the whole process was kind of like a big, long therapy session. Constantly, yeah. Sitting in story meetings going, OK, I remember once when I was a kid, I was horribly embarrassed by this moment. And it was very, like, the moment I grew up, kind of. So we, we would have these long discussions and ultimately try to thread that into the film. Not always specifically. No, but that's why it was so fun, because it really all, it, the whole thing is sort of pers all, based on all of our personal experiences. And yeah, you're right, not literally, but just sharing that experience. Everybody on our crew had that moment of they remembered, I remember when I kind of changed. I remember when I was embarrassed about my toys or whatever it was, or mm -hmm. maybe you missed the cue. And we sort of aggregated all that and funneled yep. into the film. What was that? Yeah. This place is huge. Imagination land? No way. Dream Productions? Rainbow Unicorn. She's right there. I loved you in Fairy Dream Adventure Part 7. OK, bye. I love you. So tell me a moment when you both felt real joy here in Cannes. Oh, my god. Of course, you walk in and it's overwhelming with the cameras and things. And we watched the movie, and I got to be honest, I thought I was a little nervous because there was not a lot of response in the room. People laugh, but not as loudly as, as I've seen. So uh, I wasn't sure exactly how it would go over. But then the lights came up, and we got like a 10 minute long standing ovation. It was wonderful. And they wouldn't <laughs> let us leave. It was so, I mean, I felt like my heart was gonna blow up. Yeah, I did too. I mean, I guess when we walked in, it was more like fear. Yeah. <laughs> when we walked out, it was joy. Right. Uh, it was It was just the most wonderful, honestly, of, of my whole career, of our whole career, that, that moment. Well, let's head now to the French town of Annecy, which is hosting the world's oldest and largest animation film festival. This year, there are more than 200 movies in competition from 40 countries. And one of the highlights is a Japanese cartoon called Miss Hokusai. It's an adaptation of Hinaku Sugiura's acclaimed historical manga, Sarah Suberi. It's been selected for the official feature film competition, as Oliver Farry reports. The great wave of Kanagawa comes to life Katsushka Hokusai's famous painting features in a new animated film that tells the story of one of his daughters, Oi. Miss Hokusai, as she called herself, inherited her father's talent, but her renown is not as great. I think she helped her father a lot in his work. That's also why there remain very few works signed by her. And she also married once and then divorced. After that, she returned to live with her father and she stayed by his side till his dying day. I think a lot of the works from Hokusai's later years were done in collaboration with Oi. Oh, he grew up in the city of Edo, now the Japanese capital Tokyo. She has been somewhat forgotten by the art world, but the young woman often painted in place of her father. 30,000 works were created in this studio, which resembled a hovel, but only a few dozen bear her name. Father and daughter had a special relationship to painting. The drawing has a soul and sometimes heightens reality. Oe had a very different outlook. 
particularly when it came to female characters. Hokusai, the father himself, said that Oi was clearly better than him at painting women. When you look at her works that survive today, you see how she drew female characters in a very attractive way. Miss Hokusai worked almost 25 years in her father's shadow. The film based on the manga book Sarusubri finally pays homage to Oi's work as an artist. It is released in France on September 2nd. The ANSI International Animated Film Festival runs until the 20th of June and the Peanuts movie is also on the bill. A taster of it anyway, as it's not yet completed. It's due to be released at Christmas. We're going to leave you with that. If you want an encore of Encore, remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>